Hi everyone, welcome to Art Talk at Carousel Fine Art. Today we're here at our Atlanta location in Buckhead Village. My name is Laura Horvich, I'm the co-founder of the gallery, and today we're here with John Westbay from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we just finished a exciting solo exhibition spotlight here at the gallery, and we just wanted to let you all um, kind of get inside his brain and take a peek at you know, his creativity and his creative process. So we'll just jump right into it. Thank you, Laura. You're and hello. You're welcome. And we have Peppa here with us as well. Um, I don't know if you can see her on, on camera. So tell us, like, the beginning. How did it all start? How old were you when you realized, okay, maybe I, like, I could be an artist or I have something special? Um, well, I started painting in 2013 uh, on Valentine's Day, actually. Oh, how yeah. I never cool. know if you guys, if I told you guys that. I mean, always drawing as a kid, always doodling, and every, like, from elementary school, middle school, high school, always kind of getting compl like compliments from the teachers, but also in trouble because it's not, you know, what we were doing. Right. Um, but yeah, started painting in 2013. I just painted a, a little small piece uh, as a Valentine's Day gift for my mom, which is kind of ironic because it was way before the love or the heart thing um, came about. Uh, but yeah, I just, I fell in love with painting. I fell in love with the freedom um, of just being able to do anything I wanted to do. And I would get just, you know, get lost for hours, like eight, six, seven, eight hours would go by and I would just be there working on this canvas, ex purely experimental at that point. Um, you just felt like it was kind of like a creative outlet at that point? Yeah, you know, I didn't even, I wasn't like seeking that. It was just like, oh, this, this you know, a buddy of mine was painting um, and I said, oh, this seems fun. And, and I went and yeah, got some, some, some paint and some canvases and started messing around and... Um, so primarily the beginning was paint and canvas. Was, yes, on canvas, uh, j just for a few months, and then, well, I never stopped, but for a few months it was only that, and then I uh, started doing street art uh, with spray paint in the streets. In Brooklyn. Illegally. Yes, in Brooklyn. Fail of the night. In Brooklyn, yes, at night, hoodie on. Um, I did my three days of community service for it, so... There you go. I'm not wanted or anything like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was like just I thought it would be fun and um, really had no intentions of like turning it into a career at all. Uh, but it was well received right away. Uh, people would take pictures of it. A lot of people were taking pictures, tagging it like earlier days of Instagram. Um, uh, Daily News did a full page article on it, uh, you know, and I was just messing around. It was like like kind of shocking to me. And um but then people started reaching out, like, hey, can you, you know, I was still painting at home, like these canvases, but I never sold any works at all. And then people are reaching out for, for the street art stuff, like, hey, can you make me something on canvas? And I'm like, sure. So bring the street art to, to the, the canvas, collection. yes, yeah. which was never the plan. Um, didn't think about it at all. And, but yeah, it just kind of happened from there and, and people were, were requesting it. And um, Is there anywhere... Um, a viewer could maybe find one of those original murals. Are they still there? Only like the worst. Well, first of all, none of them were great <laughs> to begin with. Um, so it was an experiment. But yes, I look at the pictures now and I'm like, wow, what? Like, what did people even see in these that made it that made a buzz happen with them? But there was something there, you know. Even though it was not refined at all, it was it was. I didn't know what spray paint to use. Like, I went to Home Depot and got. Uh, like Rust-Oleum paints before I ever knew to go to the scrapyard and get good, you know, Montana cans. Uh, didn't know how to use it, didn't have much can control, but there was something there, I guess, uh, which resonated with people early on. That is still in the work, which I'm proud of. Um, you know, it's come a long way and it's changed a lot, but it's also the same, like there's something there that's the same, which... There's an evolution. Yeah. Just like the title of the, the work behind yeah. this. Amazing. Um, so did you... Well, you just kind of touched on this next question that I had. You started with the hearts. Technically, it was your first piece. A bit of foreshadowing. What was the next phase of the art? I guess more so when people were requesting these canvases from you. Was it something else? Was it... Well, it wasn't... The hearts weren't the character yet. <clears throat> you know, it was the... Like the love, the script L, the peace sign for the O. The heart didn't have eyes. The heart was really just the the V, the V, mm -hmm. and then uh, like the the Basquiat E. Um, 
And then it was years later that the heart, yeah, like kind of got eyes. I experimented with different eyes. I had like a mouth at first with some teeth. I experimented a bit. Um, and uh, yeah, but then just the heart kind of took over and, and I really don't use the love anymore on the front of the canvas. I still sign the back, all of the pieces with that. Which are always super fun to look at. Yeah. Little, they're um, very personalized on the back of the canvas. I just got a request to do one, like commission. I did one for a guy. It's, that's the one that I've done, I think, in the past like two years on canvas a, as the artwork. I was still in murals here and there uh, to pay homage to the beginning. But yeah, the, it was, it's been a process. The heart has really evolved. Uh, my buddy was here with the, with the old uh, crew neck on with the early version the of the heart. Yeah, and it's like they're hard to look at sometimes, and but it feels good because yeah, they've they've evolved a lot, and again, it's still the same. There was no like complete uh, 180. It's been consistent the whole time, but just little by little, um, little tweaks. Yeah, getting better. You know, kind of shaking the 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 dead weight off the dust and refining it and it getting better and cleaner and me learning, you know, in this journey, I never went to art school. So learning just more techniques, how to be a better technical painter. And as your eye is getting more refined, so is your technique yeah. in a way. And it translates, I think definitely through your work. Well, thank you. Um, and would you say that the final, I guess not the final, but the current um, take on the heart is someone inspired by Murakami, this kind of style? Um, I wouldn't say so because I created it before I really I knew who he was. Mm -hmm. I learned about you know I learned about this whole world um, after I got in it, and people would say things to me. Oh, it looks like this guy Murakami, and like that's when I found him. Definitely, I love his work. Um, anytime somebody here at the opening uh, made that comparison, I'm happy to hear it. I mean, he's he's amazing, especially the way he's able to break barriers and be in the fine art market, be in, you know, more of a commercial market and little, you know, throw toys and all this stuff. Okay. That's inspiring for me. Um, but did it inspire the heart itself? No. It just kind of became somewhat, um, it was more like a cohesive uh, comparison. Yeah. I guess. Which you see throughout contemporary art, um, you know, especially when you're, you're, you're seeing different imaginations and it's almost like a cohesive consciousness that yeah. we're all a part of subconsciously yeah I um. agree and it's you know it's simple um, which I think it's you know it's, it's a heart at the end of the day right. it's 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 simple but in the same way uh, it's you know super relatable and and it's it is original it's you know it's um, from my heart and it is I don't, you know, people make the comparison of Como, Como, Como de Garçon, um, which I, again, I only learned about as people would mention it to me. Um, and, you know, it's a heart. At the end of the day, a hundred people are going to use a heart. And um, you have your I very think, distinctive way of. I do it. think my version is the best. I, I, I wouldn't disagree. <laughs> so, um, and would you say there's any symbology in using different colors of hearts, using different shapes of hearts, and I'm coming from Brooklyn and the New York kind of, you know, melting pot? Yes, absolutely. I think, I mean, I think my work overall um, would not be what it was if I didn't grow up in Brooklyn, um, in New York City, in public school, the different cultures, the different ethnicities, different, you know, getting on the train, going, being on the, tr the train itself, you know, in, in New York like City a subway. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and specifically, yes, the hearts. That's something I'm proud of. Uh, it is definitely a representation of New Yorkers and people everywhere, you know, that I, that I meet, you know, all over the world, different colors, different shapes. Um, sometimes they seem happy. Sometimes they seem a little sad. There's a teardrop coming out. Um, That's just re reality. Yeah. Yeah. I think a reflection of myself and a reflection of, of everybody I see around me. And I'm grateful for um, being from Brooklyn and growing up in such a colorful place that I, yeah, I, I can't imagine that my work would be the same if I grew up in a, I don't know, fill in the blank. Glasgow, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shots fired. You, 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 ne <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> Um, and so while we're talking about different series, um, you have more recently, I'd say within the past year, you started um, developing Cherry Blossoms and the Bonsai series. You recently went to Japan. Can you just kind of give us some color on 
what came first, kind of like the chicken or the egg? Was it the series or the trip? And like, how how did the 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 trip um, inspire the series? Furthermore, um, well, I did make the first ones before the trip, and it was on your bucket list at that point. I mean, yeah, um, Japan in general always was huge inspiration in my work. Just the the, the personification of the heart, the eyes. You know, you know, it's um, inspired by Japanese animation, absolutely, um, and, and the cherry blossoms. I, you know, I just. Again, it's been a slow evolution, and I try to carry it, keep the essence of it, but just um, you know, evolve it little by little. And it, uh, it was, yeah, I don't know, just an idea that, that the heart, like you know, as I'm thinking about it as its own character now, like where would it come from? And I just had this idea, like maybe it would, in some fantasy world, it would grow on trees. Um, and it's like, what are the most beautiful trees? Cherry blossom trees. And yeah, went for it. And I mean, the first I made, I th think like 10 and all of them sold. Um, yeah. It was definitely the most yeah, successful series, like with an immediate um, success. Um, and yeah. The, yeah the all trip, of our collectors have loved the cherry blossoms. We, you know, yeah. And the trip know. was, <laughs> I mean, it was a one, uh, once in a lifetime trip. I hope not once in a lifetime because I would love to go back. The, seeing it in person, I mean, I, I took a thousand pictures, um, really something magnificent and inspiring, and not only them, the whole the whole country, and uh, yeah, it's uh, talk about a colorful place with a lot of, you're getting a lot of uh, stimulation and... Sensory stimulation, yeah. food stimulation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Culture, history, uh, just everything. It was... Amazing, and we could definitely see since you've been back. Uh, the viewers can see the three works behind us are taking on a, a very different um, style than some of your previous series, and I think it's been really fun to watch you experiment with that and and feel the reactions from the viewers. Um, so yeah, we're just looking forward to see what what else stems from you know different inspirations and. And trips and, and, yeah. and life events that are going to be happening. Absolutely, and I and I believe that really that's my job as an artist. Mm -hmm. Not so much, it, you know, it's not a conscious thing where I ha make like a business plan and I'm to, I'm going to do this and then that series. You know, I think my job is more to just be open and you know put myself, you know, take care of myself physically, mentally, and just you know allow myself to be a vessel and. Um, you know, t take these trips, get the inspiration, um, and bring it to cut out the BS. You know, I've, I've, I've just like almost completely stopped drinking and stopped partying. I guess that's part of getting older in general. But um, I believe that really that's my job. And if I could do that, the work will just evolve on its own and grow on its own. And um, and I'm yeah grateful and happy to be able to do it. And I thank you guys for showing it the right way that it that it deserves to be shown and that it needs to the way that it needs to be shown and exhibited to elevate and to grow and to get into you know proper collections and uh so i thank you guys for that of course that's you know that's what we're here for um and just while we're on the subject before we close off here um you've got a really when we talk about colorful life, um, you've got a very colorful past. I think it's super cool. And I don't know if a lot of people know this about John, but before he was um, an artist full time, he was a barbershop owner in Brooklyn. And we were talking about this last night at dinner, this kind of, these life moments that happen that push us in the path that we know we're destined to go. You were already creating, you were already doing the street art. Art was like the hobby, but it, it wasn't something that you felt like, well, I could be an artist. Like I, like I can actually do this. Yeah, I had one foot in and one foot out, definitely. And you know, cutting hair is, I was also a barber, not only a barbershop owner. Um, cutting hair is artistic. But it's so limited, and I loved cutting hair when I did it. Um, but once I started painting, the fr again, the freedom, you know, uh, I would be in the barbershop doing a haircut and the same haircut 20 times a day, and then I would go home, and 
I would be able to paint anything I wanted, any style I wanted, any theme I wanted, any colors I wanted. And that freedom is what I fell in love with and I was never, I was never able to let go. Um, so you're saying painting was a vice? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I guess the best one, best type of one you can have in your life. But Agreed. Um, yes, so I guess it was, you know, I'm grateful for, for that time. I learned a lot. I was young. I was 20 years old when I opened up my barbershop. I had it for 10 years until COVID. I learned a lot about just people skills. And I, I was, I guess, in a way working on my craft in that time. I was working, mm -hmm. you know, with my hands, mm -hmm. fading, blending, you know, making sharp lines and all this stuff. Um, and is it like a cliche kind of like, you know, the movies, barbershop? Is, it, is there this? There's a lot of BS. Well, that part even, I don't miss Not at even all. BS, but is there this like community within like? Yes. Yeah, I guess. Like some, a hangout spot, like I a guess, camaraderie kind yes, of situation. Yes, I, I do miss a little bit of that, um, you know, because I'm in the studio a lot, mm -hmm. and that was really the place, the times that I saw, you know, my friends that I grew up with, they, you know, no, the path that I chose is a little different. Um, you know, they have regular jobs, and, and I don't really go out much. I don't go to the bar much and drink. Um, so I would see them in the barbershop, you know, once a week, every other week. Um, that part a little bit I miss, but not so much. I, I love that the canvases now, they're not late ever to the appointment. They don't move. They don't sweat. They don't bleed, if I make they a mistake. They don't talk, talk back. Yeah, I don't have to hear about their problems and their <laughs> the baby mama drama um, and all that. So, yes, I love I love right now, you know, my process uh my studio, I'm in there with my dog, my music's on. Um, You're taking I, care of my next question. I seem to do paint, that a lot. Paint the picture for the <laughs> studio. Um, my studio is in my home, mm -hmm. um, well, connected to my home, mm -hmm. which uh, was a goal for a while. Before that, I, I was... I was living in Brooklyn, had a studio in a different part of Brooklyn. I used to have to travel 30 minutes to get there. The studio was big and beautiful. Um, but I am not the type to like go to work, keep the work inside of a schedule, and then leave and then be done. So I knew uh, for a while that I wanted to have a studio at home. Um, I wake up in the morning, I have a coffee, go paint for two hours, come in, walk the dog. Um, Bronson is the dog, Bronson, by the way. as you guys <laughs> might know and see. Um, yeah, maybe go to the gym, come back, paint for a few more hours, go out, grab dinner, paint until, you know, until 2, 3 a.m., and then, boom, go right to bed, and, and same thing the next day. No, no like, set schedule. Um, I paint a lot of hours a day, but all kind of, maybe two hours here, go in. Catch a breath, yeah. get some inspiration, think about what's going to happen next on the yeah. canvas. And that was important for me. I'm able to be more efficient. Um, I missed that old studio. It was, it was big and beautiful, and right in the cool part of Brooklyn, um, Industry City. A lot of big, huge windows, all exposed brick. I miss it a little bit, uh, but I'm able to be more efficient and work better now with the studio at home. In your workflow, your, yeah. your personal workflow. Yeah. Well, I think we've covered everything, and um, thanks for all the insight and being honest, open, and real about this, this journey you're on. Of course. For those that are watching, if you are planning to come to Atlanta before the end of the month, his spotlight will be showing here at this, this space here in Bucket Village. And otherwise, we'll be happy to show some works online and look forward to what's coming next. Yeah, I recommend you guys to come. It's a great place, Buckhead Village. <laughs> I'll certainly be back. Bye.